Hello everyone, hope you're doing well and welcome to another genre breakdown video. After the last video I made, I'm so happy to be doing something which is uplifting and positive, watching and researching comedy films, forgetting the sad world outside and focusing on the small things and having a laugh, alone or with some loved ones. But thanks again for the support in the last video. Keep on liking, commenting and sharing. This really helps out our little small channel. Now, on with the video. Before we talk about the types of comedy and how the genre of comedy evolved in cinema, we need to take a journey all the way back to the year 388 BC to 425 BC, the time where Aristophanes was one of the leading playwrights of ancient Greece. You could say that it was around this time we begin to see the early stages of comedy. Aristophanes' stories usually involved character or groups of characters who is obsessed on something, mostly dark or life denying or changing, while the others or friends or groups represent life, liberation and truth. An example is the story Lysistrata, an anti-war feminist story about the housewives fed up with their husbands constantly leaving due to their love of war, while they have to do all the hard labor back home or on the farm. All the wives plan a scheme to leave even when their husbands return from battle, they will do absolutely nothing for them, including activities in the bedroom. Or is it barn? This leads into some confusion and arguments until the husband recognizes that they were ignoring their true priorities, their loving wives and family. This leads to the final scene as each man is reunited with their other half and go on a joyous, eventful evening. Using this story, we can see how Aristotle was using comedy to show an important message, a message still being seen and used today, the transition of ignorance to knowledge. Now moving forward almost 2000 years, we hit the silent film era, where comedy was the most common scene genre due to its adaptability and versatility, or versatile nature. The silent film era used mostly visual gags. Some of the earliest films found of comedy was around 1895, but it was in the early 19th century that we saw early Hollywood shine and the birth of slapstick comedies. Thanks to Keystone Studios, which was created by Keystone Mac, his studio for almost a decade would produce and create some of the most iconic films and stars, including Charlie Chaplin. Chaplin would star in his debut film, Making a Living, in 1914. Later on, we would see comedy legend Buster Keaton make his mark with his films, such as The Butcher Boy and Old Doctor. Now, picture this. World War II has just ended and sound is a commonplace in films and some of the most iconic movie cinema characters in cinema history is taking center stage. Welcome to the 1950s. In this era, there were a range of comedy types from simple spoofs to the dramatic character driven comedies. So you could get films such as Manny Monroe's and Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon's Some Like It Hot to one of my favorite films of all time, The Apartment. With another man, you did the only decent thing. I wouldn't be too sure. Just because I wear a uniform, that doesn't make me a Girl Scout. Miss Kublik, one doesn't get to be a second administrative assistant around here unless he's a pretty good judge of character. Which is a much darker story of reaching to the top, playing the corporate game, and falling in love with someone who may never share the same feelings you have, or as much as you. Anyway, fast forwarding to the 1960s, we begin to see the rise of situational comedies, aka sitcoms, with films such as Doctor Strange Love, 1964, The Party, 1968, The Pink Panther, 1963, and The Producers in 1967. What they all share in common is this theme of the characters being in unusual situations. We'll be asking the questions, old man. Who are you? You. No, not me, you. Yes, I am you. Just answer the damn questions. Who are you? I have told you. Are you deaf? No, you is blind. I'm not blind, you blind. Due to a misunderstanding or problem, leading them on this journey to solve that problem. But don't forget, with all comedies, there is a transition of ignorance to knowledge. A perfect example could be the proposal. <laughs> That's a romantic comedy, a rom-com. So how is that a situational comedy? Well, the answer is it isn't, but romantic comedies share very similar traits. 
You see, we have a protagonist who usually lives this perfect life with their perfect job, who then meets this lovable counterpart who is completely different to the protagonist, who then teaches them something about life. Or teaches them something life-changing which helps them fall in love. So, all you need then is to throw a funny sidekick, um, a major city, usually it's always London, New York or LA, and then you've got to find like a funny misunderstanding or event. So in the case of the proposal and Ryan Reynolds' character being told he is now engaged to his boss, played by Sandra Bullock, so she can fool people and not be deported back to Canada due to her visa running out and BANG! you have yourself a romantic comedy with some elements of a sitcom. So is there anywhere else we can look to to explain the comedy genre further? If there was only one man that could help us, and there is, his name was Shakespeare. And you heard me right, the man actually wrote quite a few comedies in his time, and to some professors, he even changed it and even added to it. Shakespeare comedies were not trivial or light-hearted. They were comedies due to the shape of the actions the characters or group of characters perform. So the structure of a Shakespeare comedy plot would start with a problem. In between the five acts, they would come to a resolution, harmony and union. He wrote very short but funny plays like Measure to Measure and Midnight, but the important thing about his plays is they were realistic, the characters felt like real people, so when the audience was laughing, it was not at the characters, it was with the characters. So with that in mind, we can use this concept to explore comedies in the 21st century. What we begin to see in comedy is how it preserves this balance of lightheartedness of implausible events. The reason for this is the term comedy and its meaning, which it means to intend to find something funny. It's basically a tool of exposing the state of self-delusion we have as human beings. AKA, we take the piss out of the real world and social norms of society and its ecosystem. Let's take a look at one of my favorite comedy films, Tropic Thunder, starring Ben Stiller, Robbie Downey Jr. and Tom Cruise and many more. A washed up actor who went full Full retard, man. Never go full retard. You don't buy that? That's Sean Penn, 2001, I am saying. Remember? Went full retard. Went home empty handed. Goes to make the greatest fake war film ever made, only to be dragged into an actual war on drugs. The film is basically showing the audience that there is nothing funnier than seeing the sight of someone imagining that he or she has the world under their control when clearly they do not. Another example is a TV series called Faulty Towers, which was released in 1970. The reason being, John Cleese's character is so funny that it's just watching him desperately trying to preserve the persona as an efficient hotel manager while behind the scenes everything is going into utter chaos. That clash is what makes it so funny to watch because we see someone who believes he has control when clearly it's completely out of his control. So let's summarize. We need a transition of ignorance to knowledge, a happy ending that the hero or heroine enjoys, and the hero and heroine must learn something important. If these conditions aren't met, then this could lead us into a different genre called tragedy, which is also a video that we have on. We'll leave a link in the description below. There we have it, a small breakdown of the comedy genre. I hope this helps you on your filmmaking journey. This video took a lot of research, but it was so enjoyable to make. So if you enjoy this type of content, leave a like and comment. It helps us know what you guys want to watch next. Anyway, stay safe. Beijos. Ciao.